Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here as we continue to review some holiday movies and specials since December is Christmas month, of course. Why not review the most excellent 3D and 2D, I figured, <laughs> CGI uh, animated Christmas comedy musical that came out originally on primetime on Fox back on December 17, 1999 um, alongside with Futurama because it was a holiday special at the time <laughs> that they played. Yeah, it was a holiday episode. Surprisingly enough, because Futurama was from The Simpsons creator Matt Groening, who's the executive producer of this program, joining in with Drew Barrymore, who provided the voice of the female anthropomorphic Jack Russell Terrier dog named simply Olive the Utter Reindeer. It's based on a children's book by Vivian Walsh and J. Otto Seibold. Yeah, this time Olive is the heroine that saves Christmas from being canceled by Santa after they found out that his reindeer Blitzen's been injured. And also to stop a madman mailman from canceling it for sure. You know, sending out some nasty fake letters. And she joins in with a con artist penguin named Martini. Yes. Uh, now, this was considered to be uh, 10 years after the premiere of The Simpsons when they aired their Christmas special, getting ready for their new series at the time that eventually became the longest running primetime animated special and also the longest running animated series of all time, you know, just totally uh, breaks the, the barriers of, of all the animated uh, series like the Flintstones. And to this day, it still keep on going and it never stops. It's becoming like the Guinness World Record for sure. When it did premiere, um, as it was produced by Fox Television Studios and Drew Barrymore's production company, uh, Flower Films, and it, you probably already know that Drew Barrymore now has her own talk show uh, that came out since 2020. Yeah, you can watch it uh, streaming on Pluto TV, but also on CBS affiliated stations around the world wide, <laughs> for sure. I even wonder if she talks about this special, too, because who knows? I mean, she was indeed... Um, a wonderful actress. I mean, started out as a child actress with films like uh, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and then she went on to do uh, Ever After a Cinderella Story. Um, I know she's done other films too, like Boys on the Side and Mad Love, Gun Crazy, and, and all. But Ever After a Cinderella Story was indeed. Um, the perfect performance that she ever had as a strong, vulnerable Cinderella known as Danielle. And she's definitely the most uh, strongest female character we ever got. And I'm so amazed that she could have been nominated for an Oscar in that role. Um, and of course she was in all, all the Adam Sandler films, well mostly free I believe, which is the Wedding Singer, 51st Dates, and, and that terrible Blended, which is pretty forgettable. But nevertheless, <laughs> she was always friends with Adam Sandler, along with other, other stars like Tom Green and, and, of course, Jimmy Fallon. And, but she's also friends with Steven Spielberg and all. Excellent director. Yeah. And, you know, she is a wonderful actress, too. And I'm glad she's, she's going strong. She's done a lot of great stuff here and there. Anyway, so 
During its initial broadcast, um, it actually earned uh, 6.06 million viewers um, with the additional 5.22 million uh, in the Nielsen ratings. So it was going pretty strong at some Yeah, it was really going strong. And that was enough for, for them to finally move to other cable networks and network broadcast televisions and other syndicated stations around, uh, such as Nickelodeon. I know I originally saw this on Fox uh, when it aired, uh, because I was in high school at the time, and then when I had DirecTV, I had a chance to tape it too, so I could see it again and own it. And then Cartoon Network would later play it the following year, since I know Fox couldn't play or repeated it uh, after two years because they were playing Santa Baby. That was another uh, animated primetime special. Yeah. So they do this like in each holiday season. It was on WGN, uh, My Never TV, which would have been Channel 13 in my area, and the CW, which would have been you know, Channel 5. <laughs> My area, yeah. Okay. Um, but the the purpose of the story was that it's it's sort of like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in a way, although they kind of felt like that was a myth <laughs> as a joke. Um, because they had the lyric, uh, all of the other reindeer, but they kind of misheard in dialect by thinking that they might have misheard... They must have thought that the report was was informed that Olive was going to be chosen to be replacing uh, Blitzen to become the other reindeer. Yes, that was exactly what Olive had heard, um, which is on the book too. Yeah, and this was done by DNA Productions, um, the animation team by John A. Davis and Keith Elkhorn. They actually had worked on Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius for Nickelodeon, uh, they had a, which did the TV series that follow. Uh, and they also had worked uh, with, with, uh, <laughs> they also had worked with um, stand-up comedian, um, who also had worked with uh, Stephen Brent uh, Olkenkirk, yeah, the guy who gave us uh, uh, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, he directed that. But he also went on to do those fun war, all these fun um, shows that he was doing, you know, like doing parodies with thumbs. And of course, he gave us uh, <laughs> Come Pow, Enter the Fist. Yes. Love that movie. <sighs> well, wow, right, right at the same time, too. Um, but yeah, uh, this entire team actually did all the animation for other stuff too. Uh, even uh, did some animation for the Real Al show, yeah, Real Yankovic, and the Saturday Night Special, uh, which was like a short-lived uh, sketch comedy that was supposed to be a replacement to Mad TV, but that didn't last. Yeah, and then it was AJ Time Travelers that show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the special was nominated for an Emmy Award, but it didn't win. I wish it had. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, they also aired on Cartoon Network. I I'm assuming that too. And they actually had played it many times, and they also had it on DVD and VHS. Uh, I did learn that there was an extended edition for the VHS. Uh, like they just added one more minute um, because the original TV airings in the DVD uh, were originally approximately at 45 minutes instead of uh, 46. So I, don't, I wonder what's that about, but I guess maybe there's just one deleted footage that I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, and. So anyway, their their animation in, in this special is very uh, crisp, uh, clear, and it actually runs at a at a higher uh, higher film speed uh, and frame rates. So it kind of moves really fast. I mean, and then you notice how the characters look uh, pretty odd looking in a way. 
but this is exactly how it was done in the tradition of the book so that's really cool yeah. so um, let's begin it stars Drew Barrymore once again who of course um, a long time uh, wonderful actress um, started out as a child actress with films like uh, E.T. The Extraterrestrial I know she was in Firestarter the original that is um, Alter States was her first film and um, yeah, she even had an, a Christmas movie called Babes in Toyland with Keanu Reeves and Jill Sholin. <laughs> um, but then she had other films like um, like Gun Crazy, uh, Doppelganger, and Mad Love, uh, Boys on the Side. But best of all, she was uh, the strong female character that's very vulnerable and gender with kindness for sure. Uh, as Cinderella herself, Danielle, in Ever After Cinderella Story, a terrific performance, the best one she ever had, and she could have been nominated for an Oscar, she could have won too, if that ever happened, yeah, but she also did the Adam Sandler comedies, you know, such as The Wedding Singer, 51st Dates, and of course, uh, The Forgettable Blended, and also, she did writing in cars with boys and all that. Okay. <laughs> a lot of stuff that she's done. And she now has a talk show that's on Pluto TV. Yeah, Pluto TV on streaming, but also on CBS affiliated stations uh, such as Channel 2 and Channel 9 independently. So, yeah, you do get to watch her. I wonder if she talks about this special. I, I really hope that she does because, you know, I know she remembers this. Okay, <laughs> enough said. Dan Castaneta, who is the voice of Homer Simpson on The Simpsons. Of course, uh, he's done a lot of voice acting. He's been in other films, too. Um, Joe Pontiano, who is from the movie La Bamba. He was in the TV show The Sopranos. He was even in Midnight Run. Yeah, he was in Daredevil and... Many others he's done in his career. He's excellent. Uh, Peter McCall, who was uh, from the movie Ghostbusters 2, along with the TV series Alec Mobile, and being the movie, and now you know. Um, Ed Asner, no longer with us, but he was Luke Grant, uh, the boss in the newsroom in the TV show The Mary Tyler Moore Show. He's done many other works, such as playing Carl Preckerson in Up, and so on. Yeah, he was a great actor. Uh, Tim Meadows from Saturday Night Live. Jay Moore, you may remember him from Small Soldiers, Go, Mafia, the short-lived series uh, Action, which was on Fox. I have it on DVD, of course, <laughs> and um, also Pauly, the DreamWorks movie, yeah. Michael Stipe, the lead singer of R.E.M., yes, he's also a film producer and has acted in, in some other stuff, but he's excellent, uh, Tris McNeil, long-time uh, veteran uh, voice actors who's done the voice of Gadget in the TV show Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, uh, Babs Bunny in the TV show Tiny to the Ventures, uh, Charlotte uh, Pickles, Angelica's mother in the TV show Rugrats, and she's done plenty of voice acting on The Simpsons and many other shows around. Matt Groening, of course, original creator of The Simpsons and Future Ramba. Billy West, uh, who was the voice of Ren and Stimpy on the show from Nickelodeon, which I know originally Ren was voiced by John Kay before he got fired. And he was, of course, the animator of the series. Uh, he was also the voice of Doug Funny on the TV show Doug from Nickelodeon, not the Disney one. Uh, not to be confused here, but you know that's the follow-up. 
Hadai Rich Bader from the Drew Carey Show, along with uh, the French Prince of Bel Air, and of course, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. David Herman from Mad TV, Mitch Rossi, and Cave and Calf Susi. Yeah, the voice of Phil and Lil and Betty Howard from the TV show Rugrats. And I know she did the voice of Sneezer and Tiny to the Ventures, and she's done plenty of voice acting on many shows right there. It's written by Steve Young, based on the book by Vivian Walsh and Jay Otto Selbol, and it's directed by uh, Steve Oscar Dean Moore, uh, the Academy Award nominated animator, for sure. And I know he had worked on Rugrats and other stuff, too. The special begins where we meet a female anthropomorphic Jack Russell Terrier dog named Olive, voiced by Drew Barrymore, who's wandering around town while singing the song The Days Still Remaining Till Christmas, yep, where she loves the 4th of July, has fun in the summer as well as the spring, misses Halloween in October, but Thanksgiving lands in the fall, <laughs> yeah, to have some delicious turkey and all the food and be thankful for. For the entire friends and family and all the animals too <laughs> but nevertheless her favorite holiday is the most wonderful time of the year and that's Christmas then she bumps into a con artist penguin named Martini voiced by Joe Patiano who ends up selling all these counterfeits in his briefcase Almost got caught by the cop, but Olive saves uh, his life while she ends up buying a counterfeit Rolex watch. While she does return back home, she found out that her owner, Tim, voiced by Jay Moore, was very sad and depressed that there won't be any Christmas this year due to the fact that one of the Santa's reindeer, Blitzen, is critically injured and is unable to fly. As all have discovered that Santa's expressed that in the radio interview that Christmas isn't canceled if the sleigh can be pulled by all of the other reindeer. Olive's pet flea Fido, voiced by Peter Nicole, has misheard this as all of the other reindeer as a dialect, you know, within context. Olive then becomes totally convinced that that's exactly what Santa is referring to and prompting her to travel to the North Pole to help pull the sleigh to deliver all the gifts on Christmas Eve for all the children worldwide. Otherwise, it will be canceled. So on the way to the bus station, she ends up running into a demented, disgruntled, mean-spirited postman uh, voiced by Dan Castellaneta who was frustrated by having to deliver mail during the Christmas season but was totally relieved that Christmas might be canceled for sure. He learns that Olive is trying to save Santa's flight was determined to stop her from saving Christmas but all events of going to the bus station anyway to buy the ticket to Arctic Junction and Martini finally shows up to join in with Olive to buy him a ticket so that way they'll go straight on their way until the postman showed up and captured Olive due to uh, mail fraud but after she pleaded for Martini's help Martini stops him and allowed both of them to catch the bus for sure. And while they were there, Oliver Martini talks to an Inu couple, and then the bus driver, Richard Stans, um, played by Tim Meadows, does the voice, <laughs> and he says, Oh, love, oh, love, oh, love, <laughs> well, while he was in the diner. <laughs> anyway, um, they believe Olive had misheard Santa's message, but wishes her good luck. And the postman pulls up 
next to the bus and his mail truck chasing them around and Martini eventually froze the paper airplanes to cut them off of the road and then they were getting ready for their next uh, bus trip so that they can go straight to the North Pole but they made a, a stop at the restaurant at yeah, the local diner and that's where the postman disguised himself as a waitress by the name of Flo yes it's sort of a nod to Alice, the TV show, or even the, <laughs> the movie Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. It's based upon that. But Marcio Sazy. Well, kiss my grits! Yeah, I was expecting to hear that line in the special. But that didn't happen. So, of course, um, in the skies, he warns um, Olive that Santa does uh, make a contact, which at this rate ends up tricking her by capturing her straight and locking her inside the mail truck till she found a package that is addressed to her from gonna love this deuce ex machina it contains a metal file that olive uses to escape and she did when she returns to the junction martini and richard had discovered the postman's actions Ask her how she got away for sure, but nevertheless, it was a long story. While they both missed the bus, they went straight to a nearby bar, initially harassed by the bar's patrons, including the bar owner, Ron John, yeah, Round John, yeah, Round John, Virgin, uh, Round John Virgin, which Olive stands up to them, giving a speech about the meaning of Christmas, and the patrons apologize for their behavior, and Ron John Virgin um, offers Martini and Olive a ride to the North Pole. Now, what's also interesting, too, there's also uh, Blitzen's flightless cousin named Schnitzel, who's voiced by Michael Stipe, and yes, he even has his song, were not so bad performed by himself too while they were at the North Pole Olive is being denied entry but Martine distracts the guard allowing Olive to get inside and look for Santa for sure but aside from Blitz's injury that that's happening yeah there's a lot of news reports and everyone around all these uh, anchor women and anchor mans around you know broadcasting and reporting what's happening at the North Pole. Olive convinced that Santa that the letters are indeed from the postman because that's where we see all these hate letters that's being sent by kids. So now we begin to discover that they're all fake and they're on the wrong address or indeed no address at all. So it turns out that the postman did stole a Santa's uh, mail sack and persuaded to not give up on Christmas and Santa thinks her that all of herself had joins in with the other reindeers in order to fly the sleigh and before they left the postman switches the bags of toys with a bag of junk mail and kidnaps Martini and and later Santa discovers what happened and all of follows the postman sent to track him down for sure and all of struggles with the postman you know, stops him for sure and Martini scares the postman with a jack-in-the-box and then later wrapped him up and in and, and just stuck him into the mail truck for sure even though yes he did crash the mail truck <laughs> but hey Martini survived along with him so now he gets even with him because of course he did hit his head and was knocked unconscious so now they retrieve all the presents rescue martini and, and now they continue to go on on their shift on Christmas Eve to deliver all of the gifts from all the children worldwide yeah like you're gonna love this but there's like plenty of scenes that has a lot of reference to um, there was indeed when they went to Japan uh, they discovered uh, an Ultraman and Godzilla 
And then um, I think when they went to New York, they, they discovered a, a baseball player. And then they even had uh, a Quasimodo in London. <laughs> so you get all these random characters that you see while they finished the job, even though they were behind schedule. And then they finally returned back to the North Pole and hoping that Olive will stay for a while to have some cookies and milk and all and have an excellent party. Because she did discover her house uh, around the ship. So, of course, she got a present. I mean, they all got presents after a good day work. And it was very proud and hoping they'll, they'll see each other again. Maybe for their next one. And it also made Blitzen proud, for sure. So now, um, well, she has a gift for Olive. You know, wearing the antlers, that now she finally came back with Tim, and they finally celebrate Christmas together. And he apologized to Olive, you know, for the way he acted, even though Fido misheard her by misheard him by saying that he didn't want her anymore. He didn't really said that, of course, but he didn't really mean it either. But he's understanding why, because he was sad that Santa wouldn't come deliver some gifts and all that. But most of all, he's just happy that he now has Olive. You know, I'm glad they didn't replace her with another dog, that's for sure. And we don't want that to happen. So, yes, now they finally have a wonderful day on Christmas. And then they're going to continue to go on with a wonderful night, too. <laughs> But while the postman ends up getting what he deserves straight into the zoo where he belongs. Yeah, dresses up like a penguin for Martini, meaning his zoo friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah as I said, excellent special um, with incredible animation that, that was done by this team. And the way it, it, it kind of moves really fast, you know, they use a lot of frames. Like, I think they must have used like 3,000 frames or so um, to speed up the characters for sure, the, the way their mouth movements and all. And the way um, their appearances look too, for sure. I mean, especially Olive, because she does look a little bit like a reindeer in a way, but she is indeed a dog. And... Um, and the way they created all, all of, of, of the entire town, the buildings and all the characters, you know, even with the, the black dots or some of them to have just regular eyes and stuff and all. <laughs> and the way they're portrayed, I mean, it, it's really uh, crystal and crisp and clear that they did it. And... The voice acting in this is terrific. I mean, Drew Barrymore definitely nails this performance as uh, all of the other reindeer for sure. I mean, whenever you hear that voice, I mean, it's just incredible. And it just shows because this is right up there with uh, Danielle as a strong female character for sure. And it shows. She's a heroine, and she saves Christmas from becoming a disaster and from becoming canceled because of an injured uh, reindeer. And also we got some great voice actors of Ed Asner uh, as the voice of Santa Claus. And I know he has played Santa Claus in, in the movie Elf. And then later he ended up doing it in, in another direct-to-video movie, I think or any other movie that came out on Nova TV or something. Uh, but he's the perfect part to do the voice and the perfect part to portray. And the rest of the cast is great too. Um, so you know you recognize uh, Dan Castellaneta. So a little bit of Homer Simpson in there as the postman. He was the villain in the movie. Or in the special, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that. 
And the Fidel, all his plethy is like totally mis misheard on every message that they say because he's a flea. <laughs> uh, Peter Nicole, almost starting to sound a little bit like his character in Ghostbusters 2 in a way. Um, <laughs> and Tim Meadows as Richard Stans, you know, and I remember that scene where he says, I love, I love, I love, I love. And it was nice to hear um, Shusnitso, um, which is Michael Stipe from R.E.M. I mean, that song definitely is indeed, feels like an R.E.M. Uh, song that would have joined in with his band. Uh, but they actually, they actually have a lot of great songs that they go for. Like, they got Merry Christmas After All that's performed by Big Bad, Voodoo Daddy, joined in with Drew. Um, and, of course, th there's a song called Christmas, Bob, Bug, and Hum that's performed by Dan Castellaneta. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you would recognize every other voice actors from all the shows so they portray the characters extremely well. I mean you get to see Santa, Mrs. Claus when when she bakes all the, the delicious uh, gingerbread cookies and some cocoa and, and milk and all and you get to see all the reindeers and you see what North Pole is. Amazing. Check this out. Um, it's It's fun and exciting and excellent for sure. So that's all of the other reindeer, and I give that holiday special five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.